All right, welcome back. I'm on page 749. We are starting module four. Really cool stuff. We're going to start doing trigonometric relationships. Uh, topic one, this is a little bit different. Maybe you uh, remember some trig functions, sine, cosine from geometry, but uh, we're going to go a little bit different in those. That was probably mostly in a right triangle. We're going to use that information, but we're going to continue it on and do some more cool things with it. So lesson one is talking about a sense of deja vu. Ooh, what an intriguing title. Yeah, it, it's, it's about periodic functions, and what a periodic function is is it keeps repeating itself kind of over and over again. Some things you're going to need to remember. You're going to need to have a protractor and be able to, to measure angles. All right, so for like this would be a 45-degree angle. Um, and, of course, obviously we'll get the, the compass out, the protractor out here and do a better job of that. Um, a 30 degree angle, right? Something like this. Those are not obviously perfect. This would be a 90 degree angle, right? This would be zero degrees. This would be 180 degrees and this would be 270 degrees because each one of these is 90, 180, 90 more is 270. This would be zero or take us back to 360. We could keep going too, right? Like I could add 90 more degrees. I could, I could be at 360 and add 45 more degrees and get to 405 like this would be the same exact thing, right? 405 degrees is 360 add 45 more degrees on there. It's the same same place And right, we'll talk more about that as we go So first thing we want to do here is talk about a ferris wheel. All right, so this ferris wheel has a diameter of 50 feet So that means the highest you'll be off the ground is 50 feet Riders are going to put up, be on, uh, they're going to be put on at ground level. That makes sense, all right? Um, and the wheel is going to move counterclockwise. Each ride consists of four rotations, and you can assume that it's at a constant rate of speed. So let's talk about this. At time zero, a rotation, these are all rotations. So without rotating at all, we're at <clears throat> zero feet. At one rotation, we have to be back to where we started, right? So halfway through that rotation, where would we be? Well, we're gonna be as high as we can be. We're gonna be 50 feet off the ground, all right? And so that is gonna go like this. Oh, I am so sorry. It's gonna curve a little bit up there, and a curve a little bit back down here. And essentially, this is going to repeat over and over again because, again, at the next rotation, I would be back on the ground. Halfway through, I would be at my highest. All right, we'd have this same type of graph over and over. And obviously, you, you might be able to draw it a little bit better. Sorry, it's just so, you know, it's kind of big for me over there. All right, there you have it. So that's what the graph looks like, okay? Let's talk about that graph for a minute on page uh, 751, it says, describe the characteristics of the graph. Well, what are some characteristics of that graph? Well, it's continuous, <clears throat> right? It doesn't stop. That's good to know. That's important. It has a max of 50. It has a min of zero. Um, what else do we know? Oh, you look at it it has a lot of x-intercepts doesn't it one two three four five it has a lot of x-intercepts it's going to in fact repeat those x-intercepts so we could say x-intercepts at each rotation correct all right um there's only one y-intercept at zero what do you notice about the shape? Well, I notice the shape is repetitive. It is the same one from 0 to 1. It's the same one from 1 to 2, the same one from 2 to 3. It's continuous, and it has the exact same shape. <clears throat> All right, let's go to page 752. This is what we're talking about. It says right here, it's a periodic function. A periodic function is a function whose values repeat over regular intervals. That's what we were just talking about. And it says the period of a periodic function 
is the length of the smallest interval over which the function repeats. So let's go back and look at that. What is the smallest interval that it repeats for us? It goes from 0 to 1, 1 to 2. So the period of this would be one rotation. That's how we would label that. Okay? All right. So that is what we're going to talk about today. Periodic functions. Functions whose values repeat over and over again all the way through. All right. Now this, I want you to take a second here. Read the situation. All right. This Ferris wheel is a little bit different. It's still 50 feet in diameter, but you're starting at the middle. Like you're entering at the middle. Okay? So I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own real quick. Go. All right, so let's take a look at this. We start at zero. One full rotation ends here. So it has to go all the way up to 25. Then we're not done. It goes back through where we were at all the way down 25 feet, like underground, right? And then back up. So that's one full rotation. This rotation looks a little bit different than the other one, but it's still one full rotation. One period of this is one rotation. It goes all the way up, all the way back down. It is not just this. That is not one full rotation. That's not the period. The whole thing matters. The whole up, down, and back matters of it. That would be one full period, okay? The graph here is a little bit, uh, it's still continuous. We could talk about that. We have a lot more x-intercepts, though, don't we? We have uh, x-intercepts, in fact, every half rotation because of the situation where we start at the midline, or excuse me, start at the, the, the ground level is halfway up the uh, Ferris wheel. All right, so we're going to go and come back every half rotation. So there's a lot more x-intercepts. There's still only one y-intercept, but everything else is pretty much the same. All right. So, periodic functions. All right, let's take a look at this. We're going to talk about angles here, and I want you to look here. So, we're going to do, we're going to use the circles a lot when we measure these things, and this is a little bit weird lesson, but I want you to hang with me. What's going to happen here is we always have this initial ray, and that's at z angle zero. This is where we're going to start. Degree zero is here. Anything measured from there is going to be greater than zero. So if I measure 45 degrees, boom. If I measure 180 degrees, it's from here all the way to there. If I measure 270 degrees, it's from here, 90, 180, 270. It's all the way there. I'm not measuring this way. I'm measuring counterclockwise, opposite of the way a clock would go. On page 75, uh, 755, we're going to measure some angles off, and plot them over time. And this is a little weird. So here's 755. Now what I have here is I have my protractor. It's not great. I know it's really small, and I'm really sorry. But to make this work, I had to do this. So we're going to plot points are, uh, at 30. So here's 30. OK, 30. We're going to do it at um, right on that circle. 45 degrees, so here's 40, and here's 45, all right, and then we're going to do 60 degrees, so here's 60, so right at 60, okay, we're going to do it at 90 degrees, so here's 90, let me get these a little bit bigger maybe. We're going to do it at 180. Here's 180. Here's 270. Okay. Now here's what we're going to do with that. We're going to take a straight edge, which I'm going to warp this to make straight edge. And we're going to plot these points. All right. I stretched mine out a little bit so we can do this. So this is the position of the rider in terms of the degrees of where they're at. All right. Now you'll notice it goes much bigger than 360. We'll talk about that in just a second. So, but at zero, they were at ground level before, right? So I'm gonna put a zero there. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to the next one. At 30, here's 30. So I need to go over to 30 degrees. Now this is 
Uh, one, two, three, that's 90. So this would be 30 degrees, 30, 60, 90. So at 30 degrees, I'm gonna make a dot right about there. At 45 degrees, we could do 45 degrees. Now, 45 degrees is between 30 and 60. So between 30 and 60 is right here. So I'm gonna put a dot right in there. All right, then we're gonna go to 60 degrees. At 60 degrees, we were over here. So 60 degrees is right here, boom. At 90 degrees, we should be our highest point, right? Our highest point, and that was 25 to, uh, feet off the ground. 25 feet off the ground, boom. All right, then it said one, it wanted us to do 180. So let's do 180. 180 was back at zero, right? And wanted us just to do 270. So let's do 270. At 270, it was at a low of 25 feet, right? So 270, 180, 360, it's between there. So right about there. All right. So let's just take a look and see what we have here. We have some nice beginnings of our function so it goes up comes back down goes here and it should work like that right at 360 one full rotation we we'll back here at zero all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find some more points now we have an understanding here all right what are the major points where we have all these intercepts right and that's at every 180 degrees all right so every 180 degrees we're going to have at zero and we also have our highs at 90 at 90 degrees we have our highs and at 270 we have our lows right so now check this out let's say i'm at 90 i could go 360 degrees and be back at 90. all right one full rotation i would be back at 90. So I need you to understand that 90, and if I add 360 degrees to that, it's like the same place. So 450 is like the same place as 90. I could add 360 degrees to that again and get 810. I could add 360 degrees to that and get 1170. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I want you to just do these all the way out for the graph, all right? So pause the video, make those points, and see what you have. So zero is the same as 360, is the same as 720, is the same as 1080, is the same as 1440. Periodically, it's the same. So I did 360, I did 720, I did 1080, I did 1440. 180 degrees is the same as 540, so 180, 540, 900, 1260. All right, 90 was the same as 360 degrees, right? 90 plus 360 got me to five, uh, 450. Then I went to 810. Then I went to 1170. 270, add 360 degrees, I get back to 630. Then I get to 990. And then I get to 1350. So our graph, once we graph it, is periodic because it's repeating the same motion each time. All right, and that would go on forever and ever. It would be continuous. It would still go as we went to the left and to the right. So on page 756, I want you to take a look at this and answer the questions about your graph that we just did. All right, answer all these questions. Take a minute, pause the video, and answer the questions. All right, so what is the period of this? So the period is 360, and it means that every 360 degrees, the Ferris wheel has made one complete rotation. When we look, it took 360 degrees to get back from where we started, cover all the ground, and get back to or get back to where we started. It's not just from 0 to 180. It's every part of that graph. The next one, determine any max or min. Well, it was 25 feet above the ground was our max, and 25 feet below the ground, or negative 25, was our minimum. 
Where is it at its highest? 90. 360 degrees later, 360 degrees later, 360 degrees later, right? Oh, that one's wrong. This should be what? 810, right? So this should be 810. Whew. Cannot believe that I made a mistake in a video. I mean, normally I'm so good at this. All right. Where are our lowest points? 270, then 360 degrees again, 360 degrees again, and 360 degrees again. The symmetries, there's a sort of horizontal symmetry here. If you look here, if I were to draw a vertical line here, just between 0 and 180, there's some symmetry there, much like a quadratic. Much like here, if I did it on 270, there's some symmetry. Also, if I took a horizontal line, y equals 0, and I flipped it, this would give me symmetry for this one. Not exact symmetry, we would have to actually flip it and translate it, but it does have the symmetrical uh, view there. Now, you may not know that because my graph is so terribly drawn, but it is what it is. This, if I, re if I reflect it vertically, would look a lot like that, okay? All right, two really big points I want you to get from today. We have, anytime we have these periodic functions, they have two very special things, the amplitude and the midline. Now, it says the amplitude here is the is one half the absolute value of the difference between the max and the min values. So the amplitude, if you took how high, high I went from the top to the bottom and you did half of that, that would be the amplitude. I also like to think of it as a, as a distance from this midline, which we'll talk about in a second, how high I go up and how high I go down. All right. The midline is the reference line whose equation is the average of the max and min values. All right, it's kind of like our starting point when we have a graph here. It's going to be our starting point where we go up, when we come back down. It always gets back to that midline. So it talks about what is the amplitude for each of the graphs we did this lesson. So let's take a look at this. For this one, our amplitude, this is the very first one. We started at 0, got all the way to 50. So our amplitude here would be... 50 divided by 2, or 25, right? Our amplitude at this one, it goes from 25 to negative 25. That's still 50. Half of that, our amplitude of this, would still be 25. That's the same. All right, the second question is, what's the midline? Well, the midline of this one, so we need an equation. That would be halfway through. So that would be at halfway between 0 and 50, that would be at y equals 25. So we go 25 up from that midline to get to 50, 25 down to get to 0. Our midline for this graph, well, we know that. We entered at 0, so y equals 0. These graphs are very similar, but they may not look that way to you. First of all, this graph is much better drawn. But... If I were to draw that midline here, right, and say we started our graph right here, well, that's the same as starting the graph right there, isn't it? Went up, went back down, boom, one full period. It's right in there. It's very similar. Depending on where you start can change things just a bit, obviously. All right? So I'd like you to do your book work. Page 761, 762, numbers 1 through 7. So that's on this page, and then you got to finish it on to the next page. On this graph, you're just going to graph the values you come up with from this table. All right, so you're going to have to use a protractor and measure. When you measure it, don't start it here. Start it here. So your protractor should be laid out here, and you should have points out here. These values will be you know, just estimates, okay? All right, do your best. Ask lots of questions. That's why we do these things, so you can talk to your teacher and ask for all the help you need. All right, go out there and do good things.